After Gromit returns from a morning walk, he and Wallace are discussing what they should do. Gromit finds a book and insists that Wallace reads it. It is about Alfred Wegner and the Continental Drift. We begin our story a long time ago. This is the story of Alfred Wegener and the Continental Drift Theory. This is Alfred Wegener, born November 1st, 1880, in Berlin, Germany. He was the youngest of five children, and his father Richard was a theologian and teacher of classical languages. He attended school in Berlin at Kolotsky Gymnasium, probably incorrectly pronounced. He went on to university where he obtained a director in astronomy in 1905. As a child, he loved all sorts of outdoor sports, but particularly took a shine to hiking, walking and skating, and also had a great fascination for Greenland. Alfred studied in both Germany and Austria and collected a PhD in astronomy, beloved weather systems, meteorology and new branches of science. 1905 he became an assistant at the Aeronautskium Observatorium Lindenberg near Bieskau where his older brother Kurt was and they both had an interest in meteorology and polar research. They pioneered the use of weather balloons to track air masses. One of their most famous successes was in 1906 when they held the record for a flight of 52 hours. It was then that Alfred realised that he could monitor air movements using smaller balloons. It was in 1906 that Alfred gained the opportunity to go on a two-year expedition to Greenland as a meteorologist. The main objective in Greenland was to study and track polar air circulations using weather balloons, and due to his experience with his brother, he was a big help and an expert in this area. They also dug through the ice to study fossils and animals that were frozen millions of years ago. From these collections, he realised that the dinosaur skeletons were similar to the ones that he had seen from other continents. This was discovered whilst continuing with his weather tracking experiments. They travelled back to Germany and Alfred took up a teaching post at the University of Marburg as a lecturer in meteorology. In 1910, his fascination for the Earth grew into a theory. Alfred believed that 200 million years ago, the continents of the Earth were once one. Today, we refer to this supercontinent as Pangaea which is the Greek word for entire Earth. This reference was not used by Alfred until 1927. Then over time, the continents began to crack and split. He originally thought that this was due to centric fugal force of the Earth's rotation, but then changed his focus to seafloor spreading along the mid-ocean ridges. In 1950s, evidence from magnetism in the ocean floor showed that the sea floors were spreading by a few centimetres each year. The spreading of the ocean floor moves approximately 10 centimetres a year and the molten lava follows the magnetic field of the earth. This showed movement of large parts of the earth's crust, now called tectonic plates. This supports Alfred's theories. Finally, the continents have drifted apart to form separate land masses separated by vast oceans that we know today. The Earth's continents are all set on tectonic plates that are constantly moving. Depending on how the tectonic plates move can result in a number of geological events. If the plates are moving apart, as we see as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, volcanoes will be created as molten magma escapes between the plates. Where the plates are travelling towards each other, this will force one plate over the other, which is called subduction. This produces mountain ranges, like the Himalayas. And finally, if the plates are moving sideways along their boundaries, this will cause large amounts of stress. When this reaches critical value, the plates will slip, causing earthquakes. This occurred off the coast of Japan in 2011 causing a massive tidal wave and huge destruction.
Unfortunately, because Alfred was not trained professionally as a geologist, many of his theories were disregarded by scientists, but today, those theories have been proven correct. Alfred published his first major paper in 1911, called Thermodynamics of the Atmosphere, which was used in most universities for the study of meteorology, and was based on his many findings during his trip to Greenland. In January 1912, he published his first hypotheses on the continental drift. To confirm his theory, Alfred ventured on a second expedition in 1912 with Danish expeditioner J.B. Koch, then in 1915 published The Origins of the Continents and Oceans. Alfred married Elise Koopen, whose father was W.P. Koopen, another famous meteorologist, and shortly after went on a third trip to Greenland in 1929 to continue his study. His fourth expedition was his last. On November 2nd or 3rd, he was separated from his party due to a heavy snowstorm whilst trying to reach their camp, Eastmit. He died after being separated at the age of 50. The cause of his death is unknown, but it is said that it could have been caused either from his health or his exposure to the extreme cold. At the time, it was minus 60 degrees Celsius. Gromit, you needn't feel so sad. The story may have had a sad ending, but his theories have improved scientists' understanding towards the way the Earth functions. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The life, theory, and death of the amazing Alfred Wegner. Wallace, are you confused at the moment? Oh, I understand why. Where, where have your cheese and crackers gone? Gromit!